is here. Hello, Marcus. Hi there, Melissa. Hi, everyone. And we're going to start with uh, the French car maker Peugeot Citroën. It's been bleeding cash in recent years, uh, but in order to stem the bleeding, the board has now backed a deal with Chinese car maker Dongfeng and the French government. The deal would see each of them inject 800 million euros in return for a 14% stake in Peugeot Citroën. The deal would also see one of France's oldest business dynasties lose grip of the company. Catherine Clifford has more on that. A family legacy dating back to 1810, when Peugeot started up as a maker of coffee grinders. Since then, a member of the car giant clan has always filled the post of chairman. But now a deal between Peugeot Citroën and China's Dongfeng would see chairman Thierry Peugeot lose his post. The rescue deal would see the Chinese automaker and French government each inject 800 million euros and take 14% stakes. The Peugeot family would then take a matching 14%, reduced from their current 25%. This would bring the family short of the hold required to veto decisions. Peugeot Citroën's among the hardest hit by a European slump in car sales, suffering a 5 billion euro loss in 2012. Experts say it's too dependent on the European markets. The European market lacks support. Peugeot's found itself in fierce competition with the Germans without being able to fight back. It's not had the means to develop itself in the rest of the world. The company is looking to diversify, and the Dongfeng deal could provide a foothold in the Asian market. Peugeot's locked up in the European market. It doesn't have enough access to the Asian market where there's a lot of growth. As the Peugeot family loosens its grip on its two-decade dynasty, will this price be enough to turn Peugeot around? and set it on its feet in the global markets. Now, Peugeot Citroën has been suffering as sales here in Europe have tumbled in recent years, but now the European car market is showing signs of shifting up a gear. Car sales in the European Union during January grew by more than 5%. That's in comparison to the same month back in 2013. It's the fifth month in a row that sales uh, head higher. It's uh, fueling hopes as well that 2014 will be the year when the European car market turns around. Sales are heading higher from a low base, though. 2013 was the weakest year for around two decades for the European car industry. We're going to turn to Italy next. Matteo Renzi has started the delicate, delicate task of forming a new government there. The centre-left leader has been tapped by Italy's president to become the next prime minister. But before he can actually start governing, he has to cobble together a stable coalition. Renzi has set out a reform agenda seen as very ambitious. He's promised constitutional reform as well as reforms to the labour market and the tax system. For the business perspective of this story, I spoke to Annalisa Piazza from New Edge Group in London earlier and she told me more about the challenges ahead for Renzi. Well, he definitely needs to face uh, a split mar parliament. Uh, he will uh, have to convince uh, the uh, spin-off part of uh, Forza Italia or the um, uh, Berlusconi party anyway that uh, is not uh, uh, like centering his project uh, in a uh, like kind of left-wind way uh, in order to achieve uh, his objectives. So he will need to be very careful uh, to uh, do uh, everything he can in order to uh, achieve uh, the majority within the parliament. It's the same kind of uh, problems Letta had, but uh, don't forget that uh, Renzi was voted at, the, at a very large majority during the uh, election in late uh, 2013 within his party. So he has the full support, uh, well, nearly the full support of his party, and uh, is well seen all around the country as uh, somebody who is able to make changes in order order to uh, achieve his objectives. Now, the market reaction to Renzi becoming prime minister seems to have pr been pretty muted. Why is that? We've seen borrowing costs, for instance, uh, coming down. It's a very different picture from, from previous times when we've seen political turmoil in Italy. Well, I think we need to uh, see this uh, kind of market reaction from uh, two different points of view. The first one is that uh, uh, we are in a different economic picture. Uh, Italy has uh, shown uh, the first uh, GDP growth uh, in Q4 uh, for more than three years. And uh, definitely the economic outlook is something that is uh, supportive for Renzi. Uh, on the other side, uh, you have uh, the positive uh, support uh, 
of uh, Moody's announcement uh, uh, late last week uh, that uh, the Italian uh, uh, sovereign debt uh, outlook is not negative anymore and uh, already like uh, the basis of uh, uh, Renzi's work uh, are uh, um, more positive. That was Annalisa Piazza speaking to me earlier there from London. We're going to take a look at the stock markets uh, next here in Europe. Shares in minor BHP Billiton pushed the FTSE in London higher for a third consecutive session. The FTSE ended nine-tenths of a percent in uh, positive territory. Uh, the Milan FTSE MIB, the uh, main stock market uh, in Italy was uh, slightly above the flat line as we are seeing uh, these uh, negotiations uh, take place in Italy as Matteo Renzi is trying to cobble together a coalition. In the United States, this session shares their trading slightly higher. Uh, that's despite a disappointing report on confidence among U.S. home builders. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has come down ever so slightly. It is just below that flat line. And uh, with that, I'm going to wrap up the business news uh, this time around. And I'm going to throw it back to Melissa for the rest of the show. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Marcus. 51 minutes.